My ex-husband might be the most entitled man I know. Leaving him was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made, and I thought I could live in peace for the rest of my life. But here he is again. Let me provide some context. Eight years ago, I was happily married to my husband, Nathan. Our relationship was rock solid, or so I thought. We had a good relationship. We dated for two years, engaged for almost a year while we planned our wedding, and then got married. At that point, I would probably defend and fight for our marriage with my life. I thought that we were soulmates, but I guess that was just me. A couple of months after our wedding, my husband lost his job. It was a difficult time for both of us, obviously, but I was confident that we could work through this and he would find another opportunity. We had some savings in the bank and I was working full time. Things were a bit difficult for a few months, but he was trying his best to get a job and finally got accepted after what seemed like a million interviews. I still remember how happy we were the day he received that email. I went all out and took him out to dinner to celebrate. Little did I know that this job would end up destroying my marriage. He comes back from his first day of work and instead of looking happy, he looks awful. I could see something was wrong the moment I saw him. A very difficult conversation followed in an almost comically bad turn of events. My husband's ex-girlfriend Jessica works at the same place where he has just joined. I knew about Jessica. Nathan and her dated for three years and he proposed to her, but she said no and dumped him. And this was a few years before the two of us met and started dating. Obviously, we didn't spend a lot of time talking about our past lovers, but I knew that it was extremely rough on him and he never mentioned her after that one conversation with me. When I heard that it was Jessica of all people, my stomach dropped. Out of all people, it was her. I didn't know what to do. I mean, sure, it had been years and he didn't have feelings for her anymore, but the idea of them working together was not exactly pleasant to me. He seemed genuinely upset too, and we spent a lot of time talking about what we could do. He offered to quit the job, but at that point, our savings were running out and I didn't know how long I could go on paying all our bills without making solid lifestyle changes that neither of us would be comfortable making. Also, I told myself that we were all adults here and quitting a job over an ex was childish. We stayed up almost all night talking about what to do and by the end of our conversation, I felt much better about the whole thing. It felt silly to think that some ex from years ago could affect our relationship in any way. My husband was extremely loving and kind and put all my doubts at ease. And the next day he went to work and when he came back, he said that she was in a completely different department and he hardly ever saw her once during the day. He told me that he never intended to speak to her unless it was for some unlikely work reason and that he would tell me immediately if that happened. That put my mind at ease. And as more days passed, I stopped thinking about her completely. My husband was as loving as ever, and I was proud of the two of us for overcoming something that could have caused serious trouble if not handled well. Looking back, I laugh at how naive I was. I was so blinded by love and trust in my husband that I didn't once think that something fishy was going on. A couple of months into this new job, and he went on a business trip. He told me that if it goes well, he may get a promotion, so I was very excited for him. I asked him if I could tag along with him and make it a mini getaway for the two of us, but he said that he would be working the whole time, so there wasn't a point. He also said that the team going for the meeting was all men, and none of them were bringing their wives or girlfriends, so I wouldn't be very comfortable. I was a little upset, but I didn't think anything much of it. What he said did make sense, and when he came back, I asked him about his meetings and if he thought he would get the promotion, but he might have to go on a few more meetings with this particular contractor before the promotion could be possible. 
Over the next three months, he went on trips at least once a month, but there was no news of a promotion. Instead of getting suspicious, I was naive enough to actually be concerned about his company making him work so hard without increasing his pay. I also want to make it clear that after the initial discussion, neither of us had spoken about Jessica even once. She didn't cross my mind for the most part. And even if she did, I chose not to mention it. And when I told my friends about this during the divorce, they all said that it was incredibly naive of me to blindly trust my husband so much. I agree with them now, but back then I would have trusted that man with my life. Five months into his new job, I realized that I had missed my period, not thinking much of it. I decided to take a pregnancy test anyway, just to put my mind at ease. And to my surprise, it was a positive test. I was taken aback. It was definitely not a planned pregnancy, but with Nathan's new job and both of us being in a good place financially, I thought it could be a good thing. I was nervous to tell him, but also very, very excited. Nathan was on another business trip when I took the test. But he was coming back the same day, so I decided to wait till he got back. I still remember how nervous I was and how I started daydreaming about our new life. It was pretty late by the time we got home and I remember staying up to have dinner together and he came in looking upset, so I asked him what happened. And he told me it was just work stuff and that he didn't want to talk about it. I said that I might have something that could cheer him up and asked him to wait a while and I got the test kit. I told him to close his eyes, held it up and asked him to open his eyes. He just stared at me for a few seconds and asked me if that was what he thought it was. I thought he was just in shock and said that yes and we're about to be parents excitedly. I waited for him to snap out of it and be happy but after a few moments of anticipation he still had that look on his face. I got uncomfortable and asked him if he was okay and wasn't he happy about this? His whole expression changed and he said that he was just taken aback by the surprise. I told him that I was surprised too, but this could be a very good thing for us and we can deal with it together. He still looked uncomfortable and said that he just needed some time to think. I was extremely upset at this reaction. I expected him to be happy or at least supportive. I told him that I was disappointed in him and he basically brushed me off saying that I couldn't expect him to be overjoyed at such a monumental change in his life happening without his decision. I told him that he signed up for this by getting married to me and if he couldn't be a good husband about it, maybe we need to rethink our relationship. He said that maybe we do, and left the room without another word. I said that in a moment of anger and hurt. I did not really mean it at the time, but his reaction broke my heart. I cried by myself in the living room and slept on the couch because I didn't want to see him in our bedroom. He didn't come once to check up on me or ask me to come back. Even at that point, I had faith that we would get through this and somehow recover, but that was just the beginning of my troubles. I woke up to him already dressed for work and making breakfast. I didn't speak to him and I went into our bedroom. Again, he didn't try to stop me or even say a single word to me. I didn't know what to do. I waited for him to come in after me, but after some time, I heard the front door close and knew that he had left. I spent most of that day crying to my friends and my mom. I called in sick to work. I literally remember it like it was yesterday. And by the time it was time for him to come back from work, I had a whole speech ready about how he broke my heart and needed to be a better husband to me. And little did I know, he also had a speech ready and it was nothing I could have imagined. The first thing he said after coming home was, we need to talk that worked for me. I needed to talk as well. I thought I needed that talk way more than he did really. It turns out he had the surprise of a lifetime for me. 
We sat down across from each other and with no warning, he asked me, whose baby is it? I was so confused, I genuinely didn't understand what he meant. So I asked him, and he asks me the same thing again. Whose baby is it? I will never forget. I asked him what he meant and said that obviously it was our baby. What else could even be possible, I mean? He told me that we were past that point and I should just admit the truth and get it done with. I was starting to get scared at that point. It started to feel less like a joke. I told him again it was obviously his baby and I didn't understand why he was even asking me such questions because I had never been anything but loyal to him. And he had never acted this way before. He refused to make eye contact with me and said that that was when I still cared about our relationship. I'm pretty sure I was already crying by then. I kept telling him that I love him and there was nothing more important to me than our marriage. But he just kept repeating the question. He must have asked me a dozen times and each time I was as clueless as the first time. He told me that if I couldn't be honest with him, there was little left to do because he was not raising another man's child and living with a lie. I was sobbing and kept telling him I had never even thought of another man since I met him and I didn't understand what I did to deserve such allegations. He said that with the way I couldn't wait for him to leave the house and go on business trips to tell him everything, he could want to know about my loyalty. I was too confused to even speak. Every single time he left for work, I got sad and told myself to be an adult and support him in his career because I remember how hard it was for both of us when he lost his job. Every single time I stopped asking to go along with him after the first few times because he always said that he was busy constantly and didn't get a minute to himself till late at night. I stopped calling him more than once a day when he was away because he wouldn't pick up and texted me that he was with clients. All I did was put him first only to hear him say that I wanted him a way to spend time with another man. It felt like a slap to my face. I felt sick to my stomach and I almost thought I was in a bad dream of some sort. I told him all of this and he said I shouldn't waste time making him look like the villain because he was tired of feeling unwanted and wouldn't let me make a fool of him. He said that ever since he started working and traveling, I have been distant and didn't make him feel wanted. He said he hated coming home because I didn't even look happy to see him and he felt like I was happier when he was not around. I kept telling him he was wrong and this was just a huge misunderstanding and I was just trying to be a supportive wife. And he kept saying that I was hiding someone and preferred to spend time with him instead of being in our marriage. I asked him if he had any proof of these things that he was saying and he said that he didn't need proof to see what was obvious to anyone with half a brain cell. I didn't even know what to say to that. I kept saying I have not been with anyone. I have spent most days that he was here either at home or maybe once or twice I went out with my friends and he could check my phone if he wanted to. His response to that was that he didn't need my phone with deleted evidence. I was truly defeated by that. I mean, what more could I even say? I asked him what he wanted me to do to prove my loyalty. I offered a paternity test after the baby was born, even though it killed my self-respect to say such a demeaning thing. Never in a million years could I have imagined voluntarily offering a paternity test. I have always been proud of my morals and ethics. Anyone who knows me would have backed me up on this. Anyone except my own husband, of course, and that's what hurt the most. He said that he couldn't wait nine months for a betrayal and there was no way that he would help me grow and raise a child that wasn't his. I screamed at him saying it was his baby and I called him a delusional freak for not believing me. He said he didn't care what I thought he was, but if I wanted this marriage to work, I needed to get an abortion. I was horrified he even said that. I asked him to think about what he was saying for a second and how crazy he sounded. He wouldn't budge. So I asked him what he would do if I didn't get an abortion because there was no way I would get one. He told me that if I wanted this marriage, then I had to get an abortion or else it was divorce. Divorce. 
I couldn't believe that he actually said the word. I asked him if he was serious and he said he was. I had enough at that point. It was like all the sadness disappeared at hearing those words. I told him he was free to do whatever he wanted, but I was keeping and raising my baby with or without him. He told me that he hoped I didn't sleep with a deadbeat and walked out of the house. That was the last time we were in that house together. I received a text from him later saying that he would be back to get his stuff, and I told him a time that I would be out and asked him to go away before I was back. The next day, I met my lawyer to discuss the divorce. We had bought the house together, our first house, and I wanted everything to be quick and drama-free, and so did Nathan. We decided to sell the house and split the money equally. The other things, we just took whatever we wanted. I moved in with my sister while I figured things out, and he went wherever, I guess. We did not remain in touch at all. No one in our circles or our family saw it coming. The amount of times I must have burst into tears trying to explain to someone what happened must be ridiculous. Throughout everything, his attitude remained the same. He refused to hear me or anyone else out and insisted that I hadn't been faithful. I was friends with some of his co-workers' wives and they told me that he had been going on about how I couldn't care less about being with him and never put any effort into the relationship. The whole divorce felt like something that was happening to someone else or like a movie or something that I was watching instead of something I was actually living through. At certain points, I almost started believing that I must have done something wrong to make him feel the way he said I was feeling. More than anything, I wanted to talk it out, but he completely shut me out. When my son was born, I texted him to let him know and he didn't say anything back. Months later, one of the wives reached out to me and asked me if I had heard about him. I told her that we hadn't been in contact, and she said she was sorry too, but she wanted me to hear from a friend. I asked her what happened, and she said that Nathan had gotten back with Jessica. Apparently, they were the hot topic in the office and were all over each other all the time. I broke down crying over the next few weeks I found out everything they had been seeing each other for months all those business trips that he went on were nothing but excuses to spend time with Jessica at her place Jessica was the one who brainwashed him into thinking I must be seeing other men behind his back because according to her if she had a man she would never let him stay away from her so often and a load of other garbage I found out about all of this because my friends pretended to befriend her to know what happened between Nathan and me. She was extremely smug about it and didn't seem to regret it at all. I felt like the stupidest person in the world, honestly. I saw all the signs and red flags that I had missed. In hindsight, it feels so incredibly obvious. I spent months in a slump. I was extremely depressed and it was undoubtedly the hardest period of my life. I had to quit my job and had to rely on my family to get me by. Being a single mother and dealing with my depression and the guilt of being a burden on my family was excruciating. Rough year to say the least. I'm glad my sister was there for me. I don't know how I would have managed without her, honestly. It took some time, but I recovered. I stopped obsessing about Nathan and Jessica and focused on my son, found another job and got a place of my own. I thought I was done with my ex-husband forever. And two years ago, I got married to an amazing man who treats me like a queen. He is the best thing that has possibly ever happened to me. And I am so glad my son and I get to have him in our lives. Now that I've gotten all that out of the way, let me tell you why I'm actually writing this post. A few weeks ago, I was on Facebook scrolling randomly when I got a text from Nathan. We have had absolutely no contact over the last few years. So seeing his name pop up on the screen was a feeling I cannot exactly describe. I wondered if I should even open his text, but curiosity got the best of me and I opened the chat. He said he had been trying to contact me, but my number had changed and he didn't know where I lived now. He wrote a very long text about how he had broken up with Jessica because she was cheating on him with multiple men and that he never should have let her come into our relationship. 
He said that he had thought of me and our son all the time over the past eight years, but was too ashamed to reach out to me. He also said that he knew I would never forgive him, but he wanted to be in his son's life and would do anything for a chance to prove himself worthy of being a dad. The text had a lot of other things, but mostly just him groveling about how he wants to see his son. I couldn't believe my eyes, really, after all those years. The poetic justice of Jessica cheating on him after he accused me of doing that isn't lost on me. It also felt really good to see him grovel and beg about being a part of my son's life because I know that no matter what he says, it isn't happening. I thought a lot about what I could do. I thought of ignoring him or lashing out on him or simply blocking him. But then the revengeful side of my brain took over. So my son didn't have a father on his birth certificate. I chose not to include Nathan's name and it's not like Nathan cared at the moment. Legally, he has no right over him. I dated my husband for two years before getting married to him. He has known and loved my son ever since. He is the only father figure in his life. A year ago, on our wedding anniversary, he officially adopted my baby boy. We are a family in every sense of the word. So I let the evil thoughts win a little and texted my husband back saying I don't know what he was talking about. My son was never his to begin with, and my lovely husband has adopted him. I told him that whatever Jessica made him believe all those years ago was right and that he was the type of person to be cheated on, and I'm glad he is all alone now because he deserved that. I sent a picture of me, my husband, and our boy to him as the cherry on top. I told him to never contact me again, and I blocked him. Now, of course, what I said about my son not being Nathan's biological child isn't true, but that doesn't give him any right over my son. He lost that chance before my boy was even born, and I just couldn't let go of the chance to make him feel even just a tiny portion of the suffering that he caused me. I told my husband about what I did, and he just laughed and said I didn't have to be so petty. Last night, I reached out to Laura. Her husband works with Nathan and asked her if she had heard anything about Nathan. She said she was actually going to reach out to me about the same thing. Apparently, Nathan hasn't been doing so well. He had shown up to work drunk multiple times and almost got fired. Laura obviously doesn't know what I told Nathan, so she thought it was because he was finally processing the separation from Jessica. They broke up months ago. I just listened to everything and pretended to be shocked at what she said. I thanked her for being a good friend. I haven't told my husband about this yet, and I can't tell any of my friends before I tell him. I've been feeling kind of guilty. Maybe I took things too far. AITA. Update one. Hey, everyone. I just wanted to say a huge thank you for all your supportive comments and advice. It's been really helpful to read through your experiences and perspectives. Feels good to know that there are people who support my pettiness and think that Nathan got exactly what he deserved. I do have a bit of an update on the whole Nathan situation. Laura reached out to me again and said that apparently he had a full blown out fight with Jessica in the office one night when they were both working late. He had apparently created a big scene and multiple people saw them pushing each other around and being extremely problematic. Both Jessica and Nathan got fired very quickly after that, and no one had heard from either of them ever since. All I feel about the situation is that I'm glad he redirected his anger towards Jessica and isn't trying to drag me into the situation in any way. I don't want to deal with him ever again in any capacity. I decided to tell Laura about what I told Nathan, and she seemed a bit concerned. I mean, we both hate Nathan for what he did to my son and me, but she thinks that I might have taken things too far and there's no point in letting things from the past affect him or anyone so much. She is actually telling me to reach out to Nathan again and tell him the truth. She's promised not to tell a word about this to anyone, but thinks that I should get the truth out in the open. I don't agree with this for a number of reasons, mostly because I don't care enough about Nathan to put him out of his misery, but also because I don't want him to get angry and try to find some way of getting access to my son. It is unlikely, but you never know. I refuse to take any chances when it comes to my son. He's simply too important to me, and I don't trust Nathan enough to just let something like this go. What I did 
may have been a little too harsh, but honestly, he was ready enough to believe I was lying to him about my son's paternity back when we were married, so I don't see why this is apparently such a big blow to him now. Update 2. Since my last update, I've been doing a lot of reflecting, and I decided to have an honest conversation with my husband about everything that happened and what Laura told me. He was incredibly understanding and supportive, which made me feel a lot better. We sat down together and I explained the entire situation in detail, including the message Nathan sent and my response to him. My husband listened patiently, holding my hand the whole while. And when I finished, he told me that while he understood why I did what I did, he also agreed that it might have been a bit harsh. We talked about the importance of moving forward and not letting the past affect our present happiness. This conversation really helped me put things into perspective. And I realized that while I may have been a bit harsh, I don't regret standing up for myself and my son. Nathan made his choices and now he has to live with the consequences. I might have to work on this resentment that I feel towards him though, because my husband says that it's not healthy. And I kind of agree with him, but that's my business. And so is my family. And I don't see why Nathan has to be a part of it. Update three. Hi again. I wanted to share a quick update about my situation. After talking with my husband, I decided to reach out to a therapist to work through some lingering feelings about Nathan and the whole ordeal. It's been really helpful to get a professional perspective and to start letting go of the past. I'm doing this for my own marriage and not because I care about Nathan or anything. I feel that to be a better wife and a better mom to my kid, I need to let go of the past completely. And some of you had also suggested if I had been to therapy in the past, and I got to admit you guys were right. As far as Nathan is concerned, I haven't heard from Laura anymore after the last time, and I'm not interested enough to ask about him again. I don't care how he is. He's a grown adult and should take care of his own issues. Personally, I'm doing great. And that's all that matters to me. I'm glad he reached out to me and got what he deserved. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.